Welcome to Bike Social. Welcome to homeschooling. We hope you're enjoying our series of homeschooling where we try and make motorcycling pretty simple. This time we're going to talk about rider aids, specifically ABS and traction control. Now we all know that um, due to Euro 5 and Euro 4, ABS is now standard on most bikes. Most bikes like Honda's CB500X has got traction control and ABS. So how do they work? What do they do? Front wheel, back wheel. Inside each wheel on the side is a little measuring wheel. And the bike is measuring the speed of the front wheel and the speed of the back wheel. If both wheels are doing the same speed, we're in perfect harmony. If you want to get really specific, the rear wheel does actually go a little bit quicker than the front wheel. But for argument's sake, both wheels are doing 50 miles an hour. We're happy. We accelerate rapidly. The front wheel goes to 60 miles an hour, but the rear wheel goes to 100. If the rear wheel is doing 100 miles an hour and the front wheel is only doing 60 miles an hour, we must be wheel spinning. So there'll be smoke now bellowing off the back tire and we're impressing everybody. However, the bike needs to cut in and reduce power so the rear wheel is no longer spinning and matches the speed of the front wheel. So we hit the power, the rear wheel spins, the brain of the bike notices that the rear wheel is spinning considerably quicker than the front, it reduces power so the rear wheel matches the speed of the front wheel. Traction control, done. It's that easy. ABS is almost the opposite. Rear wheel is doing 50 miles an hour, front wheel is doing 50 miles an hour. Something happens, an obstacle in the road, a deer runs out onto the road, we hit the brakes. The rear wheel starts to de-accelerate as we slow down, so it's going from 50 to 40 miles an hour, but the front wheel has gone from 50 miles an hour to nothing. So the front wheel is locked. The system now reduces the amount of brake pressure so we are not locking the front, but we still have a strong brake pressure. Depending on the sophistication of the system, how old the system is, and the, uh, how quick it can create these calculations, sometimes you can feel a pulsating through the lever. In very old cars, this was really apparent because you would brake and you could feel the ABS going on, off, on, off, because the time it was taking to make the, those decisions was a split second, but you could still feel it through the lever or the pedal. Modern ABS, you can't hardly feel it. The other scenario we have got of measuring wheel speeds is if you do a burnout. So obviously if you do a burnout, the front wheel isn't moving because you've got the front brake on, and the rear wheel is going at 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. Some systems will know that this is a burnout and allow you to smoke the rear tire. Some systems will cut the ignition so you can't do it. The other scenario is wheelies. So in a wheelie situation, both wheels are doing 50 miles an hour. We accelerate rapidly. The front wheel lifts. The rear wheel accelerates. So we go from 50 to 60 to 70 miles an hour. But the front wheel isn't accelerating at the same speed as the rear wheel because it's in the air. So again, the system will take over and it will reduce the power. So the front wheel comes back to the ground and the front and the rear wheel do the same speeds. Now the brain of the bike that is controlling this and the fueling is monitoring wheel speed. But as systems have got more advanced, they're also monitoring throttle position, they're also monitoring uh, gear, they're also monitoring the crank speed, they may be taking uh, air temperatures, they may be doing lambda sensors, it depends on the sophistication and the system that each manufacturer uses. So if we move on to 2020, the more advanced motorcycles, like Honda's Africa Twin and their Fireblade, will use an IMU. An IMU is an internal measurement unit. Essentially what that does, it measures the lean angle, the pitch and the yaw of a bike, the movement of a bike essentially. So if we go back to our simple experiment of 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, the rear wheel increases in speed to 70 or 80 miles an hour. The front wheel is still doing 50. So we know this rear wheel is spinning. But now with the IMU, we know if the bike has got five degrees of lean or if we have 50 degrees of lean. So let's pretend for a second we are the brain. We are the brain of this bike. So we know the front wheel is doing 50 miles an hour. We know the rear wheel is doing 80 miles an hour. This is not good. We also know he's in second gear 
we know we're at 14,000 RPM, and we know we have 50 degrees of lean. This is a FUBAR scenario. We have to intervene quickly, and we have to reduce the power now, okay? The other scenario is the front wheel is doing 50 miles an hour, the rear wheel is doing 60 miles an hour. The throttle is constant, the gear is fifth or sixth, the RPM is quite low. So if the real wheel momentarily spins, that we know that he must have hit a white line or a grate because it was a slight spin, we know from the IMU we have no lean angle, so the intervention doesn't need to be as abrupt or as quick. And again, these calculations, that methodology that we've just spoke about, what is the lean angle? What is the RPM? What is the crank speed? What gear is he in? How fast is the rear wheel going compared to the front wheel is made like that. And the system is that quick. So that's very simple traction control and very simple ABS.